Welcome to News Click. Today we'll be talking to D. Raghunandan, our defense uh, expert, regarding the revelations uh, brought out by Enram in the Hindu uh, previous week. There are several issues that he has brought out. In particular, he refers to the uh, nearly 15% higher cost that government of India paid for uh, purchase of uh, Rafale jet in connection in, in uh, and he pointed out that the development cost uh, which the government of India did manage to negotiate and bring it down from 1.4 billion to 1.3 billion euros nevertheless it worked out to be more costly because it was spread over 36 jets as against 126 in the uh, 2012 deal. Raghul, let me begin with NRAMS. So when he talked about the development costs and he talked about how it spread made it more expensive, uh, also uh, do you think that that's uh, the, the, the uh, that criticism is valid because obviously the development cost would be the same and if you buy fewer, they would up obviously raise the price. Yeah, but uh, it raises two questions, I think. Firstly, many of these details regarding the pricing of the India-specific enhancements, as they are called, mm. they have been in the public domain for a while. Yes. Uh, although they haven't attracted the attention uh, maybe that they deserved or maybe people were not certain about the veracity of the evidence behind uh, these statements. But it's a good thing that uh, Ram has come out with these uh, things now because I think it has once again focused attention on an aspect which has not uh, got the attention it deserved. Uh, I think that the two important points here are mm. Of course, uh, if you've got R&D costs or development costs and they are spread over only 36, not 126, the unit cost will go up. But that immediately raises the original question uh, again, which in the context of the Rafale deal is, I think, uh, like the original sin. Uh, why did you reduce the 126 to 36 uh, aircraft? Uh, particularly because uh, the argument has been that since you are buying a flyaway condition aircraft, they are actually coming to you cheaper than uh, with technology transfer and making them in India. If that is the case, then why did you go for only uh, 36? Why didn't you buy the, all the 126 in flyaway condition? It would have cost you less than the 126. In fact, uh, this brings me to uh, the next deal. question because the development cost is a non-recurring expense. Precisely. Okay, which means that in the, if any there were to be any additional purchases, the price of the per unit cost of the of the jets would have been much lower. Now the question that arises is that. Why did the government of India, which Enram also brings out, not uh, not have a follow-up clause in the deal? In fact, because, huh? in fact, that option was there when the in the original deal, yes. 2012. Deal. And in fact, even this deal, when it started, had an option for 18 additional uh, aircraft. India chose not to exercise uh, the option. This has been a puzzle from the beginning and explanations we have got from the Ministry of Defense and from Raksha Mantri uh, herself. Of course, we have not heard from the architect of the New Deal, the Prime Minister, mm. uh, who would know why uh, he went in for this. But Raksha Mantri started off by saying that we could buy only 36 because if we had bought more, we would have had to have more infrastructure at the bases, etc., forgetting that you are not going to get 126 tomorrow. You are going to get 126 spread over uh, a period of time, mm -hmm. by which time you would have built up the infrastructure. So I don't really understand this reasoning of why the 126 was reduced to 36 because 
the larger the aircraft size you would have uh, uh, of the order size it would have brought down uh, the unit uh, costs it would have met your security requirements which is clear is still there because uh, government has again issued a request for a further 110 uh, aircraft are they going to be any cheaper than this one i'll uh, come back to the to the new uh, request that they have floated but before that there is another argument that has been advanced which is that this is proved to be a bonanza for the salt aviation uh, because we are buying 36 jets they'll be delivered in three years time which means that the salt aviation would have recovered its entire development cost in three years under the original deal the salt would have recovered the costs spread over 10 years and it, it proves to be a bonanza. What do you have to say about that? See, it's a double uh, effect and I think this is where uh, insufficient attention has been paid to this. These development costs, uh, if India is paying for the entire development cost mm. of these India-specific enhancements, mm. then in that sense, the rights to these new technologies li should lie with India. Mm. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. We are paying for the development costs based on a pro rata return to India built into the cost of the aircraft. But with reduced numbers of aircraft, that means we are gifting to Dassault uh, the development costs, which Dassault is then applying to its own subsequent versions. And we are not getting anything out of it if these are India-specific enhancements as they are being called, royalties and rights and intellectual property should vest with us. But obviously, we have but been far more generous. We have been far more French. generous. We have never exercised that option. We have never spoken about it uh, in public. In fact, if you look carefully at the technical specifications of what's called the F3R standard, whereas the original RFP was to the F3 standard, most of the India specific uh, enhancements bring the F3 up through F3R, which means that we are bankrolling the so upgradation the to uh, uh, the F3R uh, standard without getting anything in return and having paid a unit cost much higher because of our limited size of our order of 36. Tell me one thing, we have already, according to news reports, India has paid up 50% of the total cost uh, for acquiring uh, a 36 jet, which comes to roughly rupees 32,000 crores, yes. okay, uh, which is an enormous amount without delivery of a single jet I'd and like without to... a bank guarantee or yes. a sovereign guarantee. Exactly. And we've been through this before in our interviews. Yeah. Government of India in any acquisition domestically mm. would never have accepted an order of this size without a bank guarantee. It's never been done uh, uh, before. No order is placed without a bank guarantee, without waiting for uh, delivery. But that apart, I think uh, when the Prime Minister made an announcement at a press conference with the French President standing next to him, the argument today that the government is putting forward, mm. which unfortunately even the Supreme Court has accepted, is that all the other procedures of the defense procurement procedures have actually been taken post facto. They are a ratification of what the Prime Minister had already, already. announced. The point I think is that the Prime Minister having announced the deal makes the price negotiating committee a toothless tiger. Because Dassault knows and the French government knows you've already committed to buy. And therefore, whatever price Dassault quotes, it finds no reason to budge from that since they can always say, go and ask your prime minister whether he wants to buy it or not. This is our price and we are not budging. So I think that announcement itself has put India into an extremely weak bargaining position as far as the price negotiations were concerned. And the Indian negotiating team, which was split, yeah. uh, 
uh, four against three, yeah. which would have otherwise invited caution yeah. or a relook or a review of, yeah. of the entire thing. Uh, it was bypassed by overruling all the 10 contentious Completely. points. Completely. And this is another glaring example of, I believe, the errors made in the Supreme Court uh, judgment, which is any post facto ratification mm. done with the Damocles sword of the Prime Minister's mm. uh, Farman uh, in front of you, who is going to dare to overrule it unless there are huge mm. uh, ramifications and people are prepared for that? Even the Defence Minister at that time, Manohar Parikar, mm. this issue was to come before the Defence Acquisition Council. He passed. And the Defence Acquisition Council just passed the buck to um, the Cabinet Committee on Security. In effect, the then Raksha Mantri was saying, this is your decision, you pass it. Well, he said so in so many words. But this raises another question also. If we have paid up 50% of the price of 36 jets to the SALT Aviation for the asking without any bank guarantee, sovereign guarantee, at the same time that we are denying Hindustan Aeronautics Limited its dues for previous payments which are pending, sure. in addition, other payments that were due to them for services rendered or products delivered to them. What does it imply? Well, it clearly implies that India in its entire defense procurement procedures mm -hmm despite all the provisions therein, has rendered itself vulnerable to pressures from foreign original equipment manufacturers. Mm. And we have now placed our entire defense procurement at the mercies of foreign OEMs because we have gone out of our way to undermine our own uh, defense production setup, which is in the public sector. Raghu, there are two issues that are connected with it I'd like to draw your attention to. There was a story the other day which talked about upgradation of Jaguar uh, by putting in new engines. Honeywell engines, the price which they quoted, were exorbitant. Apart from that, the integration cost that they demanded from Government of India of $1.6 billion dollars were considered way too high because HAL has quoted a price of $300 million, which is Absolutely. less than actually $300 million Absolutely. for the exactly the same thing for integrating uh, the engine to the airframe of Jaguar and other technical things that, yes. that are required yes. to be done. Which brings into issue the, the significance of a domestic unit, especially a defense public sector yes. unit, and its significance because it, it actually shows that in the long run, it would be cheaper to manufacture things at home. See, it's not just cheaper, Gautam. I would not even mind, mm. like in the MMRCA deal, making 126, buying a total of 126 with 18 in a flyaway condition and 108 being made in India, the 108 being made in India would be more expensive than the 18 you buy from outside. But that's a price we are prepared to pay in order for gaining control over the production process and therefore the life cycle reliability of the ownership of that technology. This is what technological capability means. And we should be prepared to pay an initial price in order to gain 20 years down the line or 25 years down the line, mastery over our own technology. Mm. And denying ourselves that capability, we are falling in prey to a serial dependence on foreign original equipment manufacturers. And that is what the example you have cited indicates. Raghu, one final question. Uh, the salt has gained stands to benefit. In fact, it's been given a bonanza. Sure. 
एच ए एल इज सफरिंग बिकॉज ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया डिनाइंग इट फंड फर्स्ट स्टॉपिंग ऑल बजट एलोकेशन फॉर डिफेंस पब्लिक सेक्टर यूनिट्स देन फोर्सिंग दैम टू बाय प्रोमोटर्स पार्ट ऑफ प्रोमोटर्स शेयर विच मीन्स दैट एच ए एल फॉर इंस्टेंस हैड टू डिप इन टू इट्स कैश रिजर्व टू पे गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड देन थर्ड गो टू द कैपिटल मार्केट टू रेज मनी वेर देन investor interest also enters the scene sure. the main gainer in the all this is the salt aviation and reliance anil ambani group the one which has suffered maximum and is being depleted of all its resources and being run down seems to be hal yeah. now what does it tell you about the policy orientation of a government which claims to be supranationalist i'll go one step further mm. the loser is not only hindustan aeronautics limited mm. the loser is the nation mm. and our national security by a increasing dependence on foreign oems and b sacrificing the capability that you have built up mm. which happens to be in the public sector by inviting foreign oems to partner with novice private sector entities in india you are perpetuating the uh, dependence on external uh, agencies the loser is going to be the country and i think we are committing this mistake over several decades now and this government has taken it to a pinnacle by making such a fetish out of uh, bringing the private sector into the defense we have no internal defense planning we have no long term planning of what is the equipment mm. that we want and therefore what is the technological capability you should build mm. and how it should be built you are now virtually saying let's just buy stuff from outside and gain a few pennies by asking them to partner with some novice company here which will do some screw driver assembly on ckd or skd basis and we are happy with that so i think the loser it's not just hal the loser is the country and it also means that it's delayed by several years delivery or acquisition of jets which were needed urgently delay in this one case but if you continue to proceed on an order to order hardware to hardware basis then you are delaying acquisition of indigenous capability not by years but by decades by decades thank you ragu this is all for for now but rafal scam is not going away any time soon there are many 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 revelations that uh that are going to hit the public domain uh, as we go along thank you for watching news click if you have feedback do get back to us